make fun of us. So what you th you didn't like Hoover? He liked Star Dump. He wasn't for the poor people. No. No. But Roosevelt coming there, that's the best man. They'll never be appraised of to beat him. I don't care who gets in there, what they do, how they do it. There'll never be nobody to beat that man. And our son, is the senior of our class at Bentland, went to his little house one time, little white house in Georgia. And we went to the little roadster that he drove because he was crippled. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't drive nothing. They had it special built for him. It was in a glass covered thing. You could just go to the glass and look in at it. Well, and I saw the last dish that he ate oatmeal out out of that morning before he died. I seen that dish. Did you listen to him on the radio? Mm hmm Did your family have a radio? And we went down when they brought his body through uh, Seneca on the train. We went down there to see that train go by. Oh, I bet you were heartbroken, weren't you? I was. And I don't care who gets in that White House, they'll never beat that man. Well, a lot of stuff <clears throat> up in Oconee County was built by the CCC, wasn't it? That's what I'm saying. He put that up and started the poor people of having stuff. Then they started a place in one home. They had a big building up there. I don't know where it's still there or not. And did you know what we done? My two brothers, Junior and Alfred, built an iron wheel wagon now. Iron wheel wagon. We pulled that wagon to go to that big place and we got free food. That's the way we made it through Roosevelt. And if anybody says anything about that man, bad thing about that man, I'm going to stop them right in their tracks. I say, here, you don't talk about that man in front of me. What'd you think of Eleanor? Uh, she was all right. <clears throat> uh, I, I said one thing that was about the ugliest woman I've ever seen. <laughs> Tell the truth and be done with it. She was not no gorgeous woman to be a first lady. <laughs> but he, he made up for it. He made up for eating cornmeal gravy with water. You better believe it. We were so proud. And when we go get them commodities, we get all kinds of things to eat. And one, a few times, we'd get a big bunch of ham. Oh my God, we thought we was rich when we sat down at that table and start eating that ham. We thought we were rich. What kind of work did your daddy find there in the Depression? Anything? The WPA. Oh. And so he stayed with that? What's the WPA? It, it was working on roads, digging ditches. It was hard work. And when my daddy one time went to the hospital, well, I think for his uh, prostate surgery, that doctor told him, said, Mr. Nichols, I can tell you've worked hard all your life by looking at your hands. So, Daddy worked on the WPA. And For a dollar a day. And how many kids? Three kids? Five. Five kids. Oh, Lord. Five. Lois, me, Junior, Alfred, Burnell. And we had to work. And then we farmed. And let me tell you, one time since we've been here... We were kind of having it. It was hard for us to buy this house because we spent every dime we had, $1,500 to pay down on it to get it. Because we'd been riding by here and we loved this place. So anyway, we bought it and we were having a hard time. So Mr. Rob Morgan in the Fairview community where I used to live was brought up. He had a farm, a big cotton field. 
we would go, I'd, his daughter would come after me early that morning. I'd start picking cotton. And the kids were in school. So when they got out of school, when Jerry got 16 years old, he got his driver's license. He would drive them over there and they'd pick cotton. We'd pick cotton till dark. And that day, I wouldn't let them put a, not a bit of cotton on my sheet. <laughs> not one bit. I said, stay away from that sheet. <laughs> Rob Morgan would beat anybody a picking cotton. That day, this little woman beat him. You know <clears> how <throat> many pounds of cotton I picked that day? How many? 210 pounds of cotton. He liked to fell over when he put them up on that scale and weighed them. He said, well, I can tell you one thing, Edna. You the first one that's ever beat me a picking cotton. I said, Amen. <laughs> My other grandma grew up picking cotton too. Louise's family. So the next morning I couldn't hardly really get up and down them steps there. Did you know what we took the money paying that uh, picking that cotton? Paid our light bill with it. That's how we suffered for this place here. And that's the reason. You've stayed all these years. I would want it to stay in the family, if possible. Yeah, I know. It would break my heart if this wasn't your place. But I mentioned that to that lawyer right after Claude died, and he said, Miss Chapman, I don't think that would be a good idea. He said, some of them might, some of your children might not agree in it, with it. I said, it's not my children's name. It's mine. <laughs> He looked at me right funny. Oh my God, I've run into a woman that's going to tell me off if I don't shut up. <laughs> so I told him, but he still didn't think it was no Well, bad. it's because it's such a value. It's a valuable piece of property. That's why. Well, this uh, Helen Panuccio, that I, one of them that I last quit doing her house. Her husband is a realtor. He's retired now. But he always told me, he said, I tell you right now, Edna, you're sitting on the gold mine. I know, but it's worth more than gold. Oh, it, it is to me. See, the first of September last year, I was here 50 years. And it seemed like I've been here forever. It seemed like I was born here and raised you. 50 years? I've been here 50 years. And nobody can understand. They asked me, how in the world do you take care of that place to make it so pretty? Every time Helen Panuccio passes here, she said, I could just stop out there in the middle of the road and look at your place and know what kind of a person you are. Cause nobody could please her cleaning her house but me. She'd love to have me back over there, but I can't do that no more. Well, you're almost 90. You need to take it easy. But you know what her husband said? He said, you know, I would love for you to come and spend the day with us one day. And I would just love for you to clean my refrigerator. <laughs> nobody cleaned it like you did. I said, one of these days, Tony, I'm going to take you up. When I feel good, I might take you up and come over and clean your refrigerator. Cleaning Just, makes you feel good. Well, that was part of my life, and I was making, you know, some money, and that's the reason I could send everybody $5 on their birthdays, but I can't do it no more. Well, nobody expects you to do that anymore. Because I just draw a little over $700 a month. I know. It's not enough to live on. It's criminal. But I know how to manage. I know you do. It's because you live through hard times. You know how to take care of things. If you live, if you live with a silver spoon in your mouth and get everything that you want, you'll never enjoy life like I have enjoyed it. Never. Because when you work for something, it means more to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Kristen, now I feel like I'm rich. You are rich. 
I think I've got the most I've You've ever had. You've got health, family, friends. And I've got the most I've ever had in my life, and that's the reason I feel like I'm rich. Well, I appreciate you sharing that rich biscuits with me this morning. <laughs>